Welcome back to Women Making Moves, where we celebrate the moves that women are making. My name is Amy Pons. I'm a master certified life coach and an energy healer. I'm joined today with Sharon Ross. With over 17 years of marketing experience, she's a seasoned global marketing executive known for innovative thinking and challenging the status quo. Sharon's track record showcases her ability to drive revenue, engage customers, and differentiate brands in both B2B and B2C markets. Her strength lies in her communication skills, creative drive, and analytical abilities, which enable her to lead marketing teams effectively and deliver results. Passionate about empowering disruptive companies to succeed, Sherahan brings an entrepreneurial spirit and a laser focus on clear business insight, strategy alignment, and exceptional execution. Her extensive experience spans diverse industries and channels helping tech companies win. Sherahan's approach to marketing is strategic and customer-centric. She leverages data and technology to deliver personalized experiences and drive business results. Agile and adaptable, she consistently involves and responds to changing market conditions and consumer preferences. Sherahan, welcome. Hi, Amy. Thank you for having me. What a great intro. It's bringing back so many, so many things from my my last 20 years in marketing. <laughs> and <laughs> it's uh I'm sitting with my corporate wound right now. I'm I'm helping her in real time to embrace and love and it's all good and marketing can be amazing. I'm glad you're here. It feels. Thank you. Thank you. It, it's true. Mar- I mean, marketing is wonderful. I think people just overcomplicate it. It's not easy, but it is simple. And it's it's just a lot of fun because for me, marketing is art and science. And you don't find that in a lot of other industries. You you get to be creative and innovative, but you also get to experiment and test. I mean, it's the best of both worlds. I think what started to feel icky for me is that in some cases, in true consumer consumerism, capitalism form, it feels icky because some companies, some ways that are that it's being done is actually not trying to find out the best for the individual person. It's like a mass manipulation. Do you know what I mean? Of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. And that's the thing. I mean, marketing is psychology and those who understand it can can manipulate. And, and if you have a nefarious mo- motive, of course, you're going to take it the icky way. But I think consumers are enlightened. More and more consumers, especially the younger generation, they they get it. And they're only really interested in brands that are authentic. And I don't know that they follow brands as much anymore as they follow individuals who work for those brands. Because if you are a true, powerful brand, your employees are going to be your biggest advocates, your ambassadors. You, they're going to be talking about you. And it, it's all about the human interaction. And so people want to buy from people. They don't want to buy from big brands and big corporations and, and big brother. And so I think brands are falling behind that are not realizing that. They're not realizing that community-led portion of social selling, that authenticity piece. And we're seeing it every day, especially with some startups that are failing all around us. You know, they they raise the money and they don't fulfill their promises. From my experience of being in big corporate is that the profit is completely on top of the people in terms of prioritization. And so the way that the brand used to feel years and years and years ago, I used to be so proud to say I work for X. Mm. And that diminished with a broad change in leadership and, you know, the trickle down effect. So I agree with you. It's absolutely the people that are leading and like making it cool, making it exciting, making it heart led, passionate. You know, we can be passionate and heart led and also get shit done. We don't have to do either or. Right. I'm and- just tired of like the big corporations that just it's all the the bottom line, the revenue, and, and you're not focusing on the people, you're not focusing on solving for the greater good. What's broken, you know? And and I've seen this, like I follow a lot of huge companies and brands and leaders on LinkedIn. And, and you read about people talking about like, the Elon Musks, right? Yes, he's powerful. Yes, he's successful, but he doesn't lead with empathy. And somebody once wrote, you know, should I lead with empathy or should I be cutthroat? And the fact that you're asking that question makes no sense to me. What do you mean? No, you should lead with empathy. You're, you're already cutthroat if you're asking that question, likely. I don't get it. <laughs> yes. It's your point, if we take it from big corp or all the way down to the businesses that we own and the, the work that we do, no matter who you are, no matter what you're selling, no matter what brand you are, you're buying from the person, mm-hmm. not necessarily the brand. I If I love the person, <laughs> I'll buy... I don't know, a brown paper bag, you know, I'll be like, yeah, I need that because I believe in you. I trust in you. 
we used to say, look at the way the employees are treated. Look at the ways the employees feel. And likely that is a projection of what the customer will end up feeling, you know, in a certain amount of time. Awesome. I love talking shop. Both of us have <laughs> almost 20 years marketing experience. And oh my gosh. And both. corporate experience. We're both traumatized from the corporate. I'm the corporate survivor. Uh, yeah, we're both global marketing champs. Sharon, what are the moves that you're excited to be making? I know you made an announcement recently, but what uh, what's all going on? Tell us. So the thing is, my passion and my mission has not changed. I want to be the guide, the mentor, the the empower that I didn't have growing up in corporate America or just growing up in my career. Nobody sounded like me. Nobody looked like me. It, you know, it was male dominant, white, not a lot of diversity. But that isn't just it. It's it's I was a leader very early on in my career and I led by example. You know, I tried to empower the women that worked for me. I tried to show them how to have a voice, how to stand up for themselves, how to be confident, how to take up space, right? Because we're taught from early on it not to do that. You know, you and I are from the same generation and it's very different how we were raised and how we grew up, even in our career, even in our teens and twenties than today's teens and twenties. So I want to be that for those because I didn't have that. But the thing is, I still want the stability of a full-time job. So while I'm embarking on that journey, while I'm still looking for that right space for me to join and have a seat at the table, I want to offer my services as a mentor. I want to help specifically women, but really anybody who wants to know how to network, how to use LinkedIn to their advantage, how to follow in my footsteps. Because again, we talked about this recently. I'm not a coach. I'm not certified. I am not here to coach you or extract something from you. I am here to lead by example, show you what I've done and give you some tips on how to succeed in this very, very competitive attention economy, right? It's all about this creator economy, attention economy. It's whoever yells the loudest usually gets the the attention, but like there's a way to do it correctly. So that was my announcement was, you know, I opened up my mentor services, mentorship services. I'm taking on a few this coming year. And I'm also still doing my fractional chief marketing officer work. So I'm working with a couple of clients right now. I might open it up to work with a few more, but really my focus is on my impact. So once somebody once asked me, how do you define success? Success is different for everybody. You know, some people think success is all about your title, your accolades, the money you're making. For me, success is about my happiness and the impact that I'm making. My happiness, I'm happily married. I have two beautiful toddlers. I have a wonderful family and friends. I've had a very fulfilling and challenging career. I I have a roof over my head. I'm not in a war zone. I'm happy, right? And then the impact, you know, I'm raising two humans in a very, very complicated, difficult world. And I want them to be great people. I want them to care about other people. My impact, I want to do something around making this place better for I want to empower women. I I care about social justice. I care about the environment. I care about the planet. I really care about animals. I care about human rights, you know, and and I'm I'm not going to advertise all of that, but that's my impact. That's what I do that makes me happy, feel fulfilled and feel like I'm doing something for the greater good. And so that's how I define success. And so to continue, I want to be part of an organization that understands that I have a lot to offer where I want to see them at the table, where decisions are being made, and we can you know, make transformative change. We can really challenge the status quo. We can shatter glass ceilings. We can fund women. We can support women. We can support minorities. We can not just talk about inclusivity and equity, but actually walk the walk, walk the talk, actions speak louder. I want to support the movers and the shakers. You know, you talked about interviewing the likes of Cindy and Aaron and Nita. These are some amazingly powerful women who are the kindest souls I've ever known. We need more of that. And it's up to us to mentor the next generation so that we have more of them. We can have all the allies in the world, but I think together we can make that change. We can make that impact and we need to join forces. You know, Aaron posts, Aaron Gallagher, in case anybody's wondering who Aaron is, Aaron Gallagher posts frequently about Support women, shop small, shop from female business owners. Cindy Gallup posts frequently about funding females, funding women. And Nita, Nita Malik, she talks about 
equality and equity and diversity. She comes from big corporate as well. And her experiences are very different. And so she always talks about how do we empower and support one another? And what does that look like? We need more of that. And I want to be that from the bottom of my heart. When people reach out to me on LinkedIn via DMs, via comments, I take the time to respond because I want to be who wasn't there for me back then. It is all about energetics as well. Like what you put out into Mm -hmm. the world is what you'll get back. So you bring up a lot of business owners I hear you when it's frustrating when when you're getting sold to all day long in DMs. I hear you. I like to think that those folks also have good intentions. They're also trying to get a roof over their head, food on the table. So I will respond and say, no, thanks. I'm not in need of your services at this time. At least try to respond. And I know that I know you can't respond to everybody. It's something just to to try to continue to share the the love that's needed back in the world. Two things came up for me when you were talking is one, I hear you that you don't always advertise all the great things that you're doing. Also, I feel that a lot of our upbringing was you grow up, you go to school, you go to college, you get one job, you retire and you live in Florida. What I'm trying to always showcase about me is that I'm not doing ever any one thing. I'm doing a lot of different things helping other people and women to say, I'm proud of all the things I'm doing or what I'm accomplishing. I won't do it very often, but I'll do it once in a while just to say, I'm not ever going to do just one thing again. And then the other thing that you were saying that really resonated was that you talk about giving back to the generations coming after us. And even in a lot of cases, the women who are still in the workplace and might be struggling. I'm writing a book right now that is geared toward women that are in the workplace at those higher levels and wish they could bring more of the divine feminine energy into the workplace and the male dominated energy space. And at the same time, they know that by doing that, they could be putting their job on the line, their well-being on the line. So my book is going to be really geared toward small degrees and shifts for these women to start making change or helping implement change. And by the way, the book is centered around this idea that the workplace has become a game to play. I don't want the game. Some people want the game. Awesome. But how would you share with a brand new, let's say Gen Z coming out of school and really wanting to make change? And then they get in and they're like, oh, this is what it is. And they're going to see the, the, the kind of the disenchantment that we saw. How would you share with them, I guess, how to play the game to kind of stay in so that they can make change long-term? What does that look like? You know the say, oh, I'm one person. I can't make change or I can't really create so much change. It's just me. But the thing is, it's it, think about it as a ripple effect. One person can definitely make a huge impact and change. You hear people saying, oh, don't hate the player, hate the game. No, hate the game. Don't play the game. Don't be part of this game. Get out. And I get it. I get it. You have to make ends meet. You need to survive before you can thrive. You you need to pay your mortgage, your bills. You want to have kids. You want to have family. I, I get all that. But we're just becoming more cogs in this in this big corporate machine. We're all just blindly following. And, and then nobody's nobody's getting out. Nobody's breaking the rules. So I say break the rules. Get out. If it's not, if it's not feeding your soul, get out. You don't have to play the game. And the more people that try not to play the game, that's going to create a ripple effect. And I'll tie it back to LinkedIn. You see a lot of these really big LinkedIn influencers. I'm going to call them influencers because some of them really have the blue badge or hundreds of thousands of followers. And they talk about monetizing LinkedIn and how to write on LinkedIn and what type of content. And everybody's talking about hack this, viral that. And everyone is feeding into it. And so then all of a sudden, everything in my feed, which I purge my feed once every few months, all of my feed is this chalky content, like sentences. And then they say, oh, people's attention spans, you know, you got to get to your point quickly. But they're playing a game, right? They're playing the game of trying to figure out the algorithm. They're after vanity metrics. And so they're selling their services on how you can become them. And so more and more people are joining and playing the same game, doing the same thing. And then it just becomes this vicious cycle. I'm not playing the game. I gained my connections and my network authentically. I showed up as myself. I spoke my mind. I tried to add value. I reached out. I connected. I sent DMs. That's how I did it. And that's how I can mentor and teach you to do it. 
but I'm not telling you five hacks on how to make a hundred thousand dollars tomorrow. Like I, no, no, you need to show up authentically. And that's the other thing. Like I talked about this today. Why would you accept a connection request from somebody and then completely ghost them? When I send you a connection request, there's usually a message. There's usually, hey, I, I'm connecting with you because I love your company or I've been looking at your content and it speaks to me. Or, you know, my friend Amy and she spoke highly of you. So I'd love to get to know you. And they accept. But then I reach out and say, let's chat. I'd like to get to know you a little bit more. You know, I'm not here after numbers. I don't want followers. I want relationships. I want a community. I want a network. Your network becomes your net worth. I want to know who you are. I want to know how I can help you. And maybe down the road, maybe you can help me or together we can help a mutual, you know, network or connection, but then they just ghost you. So were you just after connections? Were you just after the vanity metrics? Maybe, it's but in my experience, there's both. There are people that will see LinkedIn recommends you connect. You know what I'm saying? Daily, there's like all those people. So people will reach out and say, I love your headline. I love your profile pic. I love the work that you do. And they just want to be connected so they can see more of my work show up in their feed. Love that. When the people write and they're wanting to sell me, I will accept. And then, like I said earlier, I will write a note saying, no, thank you. I'm, you know, but let's stay connected. You never know. So admittedly, I don't talk to every single person that I connect with. But we have, we connect based on our headlines, on our work that we're doing, and we just will start commenting on each other's work. It's not about a transaction. So I think it's like a both. And there are those folks that are wanting to bottle how they made success, which is awesome for them. As a coach, I will say that's amazing for them. And it may not happen for you the same way. Because you have a unique brilliance. No one on this plane can do anything that you do the way that you do it. And so just be mindful as you enter into conversations with people that want to sell to scale, et cetera. It's just really about what you specifically want. And back to you were saying earlier about your specific definition of success. And I think this is an awesome segue. I didn't even try to do this. But next, we're going to talk about a post that you made recently on LinkedIn. I'm going to read it. And it's beautifully tying together all that we've been talking about so far. So from one day ago, you say, in the world of achievement and success, you often see the polished final product, the triumphs, the glory, the standing ovations. But what you don't see, what rarely gets shared are the messy, challenging, and sometimes even grueling parts of the journey. Building in public is a rare and courageous act. It means revealing the ups and downs, the failures, and the scars you've earned along the way. It's about being authentic, transparent, and vulnerable about the process, not just the outcome. Too often, we hear success stories of after the fact, the struggles, the setbacks, the doubts, all neatly packaged in hindsight. But remember, you're only getting a glimpse of the full story. So the next time you encounter a success story, take it with a grain of salt, appreciate the achievement, but recognize that it's the tip of the iceberg. Behind every success, there is a hidden world of hard work, determination, and resilience. And if you're on your journey towards success, consider sharing your process with others. Embrace the messy middle, the imperfect moments, and the failures. Your authenticity might inspire someone else on their path to greatness. Are you sure you're not a coach? Some of the told me that. Are you sure you're not a coach? Are you not a teacher? No, I I am not. But, <laughs> We're, but once again, we only, and I'll say we as a broad society, not every single person, but we broadly, we've operated so long in the masculine. So high level energies Divine masculine is about being tied to an outcome, taking action, doing. The divine feminine is feeling, flowing, trusting. The two together, unstoppable. We only hear about in the masculine though. Something is broken. When we think we're empathetic or as humans, why do we only care about the accolades and the success and and aspire to be someone else why are we comparing our journeys to somebody else's I don't think that they only want to know about the success I don't think that they don't care about the journey I think it's more about oh someone made it and I love the balance that you're talking about which share your successes yeah be excited about what you've achieved but maybe give a glimpse along the way about how just some insight. And it depends on how comfortable or safe you feel actually with yourself. People will only share as deeply as they have gone with themselves. And and there's a fear of retaliation in some shape, way, or form. I actually had a coach maybe a couple of years ago. And I believe in that, by the way, uh, the caveat, every, I'm just going to say adult, because I don't know yet about children, <laughs> but every adult should have 
or at any point in their life, adult life, should have a coach, should have a mentor, and should have a therapist. (laughs) One of the three is really good. Two of the three is amazing. All three, you're unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Get a coach, get a mentor, find a therapist. Doesn't have to be at all times, just at some point in your adult life, do this. But anyway, so I digress. Okay, I'll go back to what my coach said. It shows when you're desperate. And so people fear that. And so they're thinking, okay, while I'm struggling, I'm going to keep that to myself. And then when I succeed, then I'll share my struggles. And I get it because sometimes when you show your struggles before you're successful, you're just going to get stepped on or passed up. And so they kind of think, I'm going to go after the person who is already successful and have a big title and a big company, et cetera, et cetera. But you don't know what that person had to endure to get to where they're at. You don't see that they've been with this company 12 years and got promoted three times. Right now, they're the SVP of whatever, fill in the blank company. And so that's what really bothers me is I think just as a as a civilization, we we like the shiny new thing. We like seeing the uh, the beauty. We like seeing the success. And we maybe get turned off by anything that's not to our standard instead of realizing that It's ugly for everybody. Everybody has their own struggle. You have no idea what people are going through. You don't know that this this really successful person at this really big company, you don't know her mental load. You just have to, I think people just need to lead with empathy. Try to put yourself in their shoes. Try to open your mind a little bit to, you know, if you're struggling, others are struggling too. Some have it worse, some have it better. It's just how it is. I would also add, if someone is in your life whether digital or in person, and you feel compelled to share your struggles and the person, again, online or offline, judges you for it or makes some sort of a personal, gives a personal opinion about it, and it makes you feel less than, you have full autonomy and free will to unsubscribe from that person, block that person, both online and offline. You have the choice to walk away. What would you say to people that both get your work and what you're trying to do, which is your expertise in marketing, and you're also guiding, mentoring folks who both want to be in the workplace or want to do their own thing, et cetera, whatever that looks like, they get it. For those people that don't get it and maybe come after you, what would you say to both of them, those who follow your work and feel resonated with you, but also those who feel compelled to come after you? What does that look like? What is that conversation? For those who love what I do and understand it, obviously we're developing a relationship. They're becoming part of my community. So that's what I'm seeking. Uh, No, I don't want carbon copies of me and I'm not not trying to create more of me, but I'm saying we vibe. You and I, Amy, are very different people, but you and I vibe. You're my community. You're my support. I have you in my corner and you have me in your corner. That's what I'm talking about. For the haters or what I I coined a term recently on LinkedIn, potty people. It was a it was a typo, but it kind of took off. So we're gonna call them potty people because I used to call them trolls, but to be honest, I love trolls. Like the actual little trolls. You know, I grew up with that, and then the movies are fun. My kids love them. I hate to call potty people trolls. But anyways, for those, you know, the thing is I'm not I'm not everybody's cup of tea. We don't have to get along. You don't have to agree with me. Move on. But there's a difference between calling somebody out on their bullshit and just trying to be an asshole. If you're just trying to be an asshole, that I have I have no room for that. You know, it's one thing to disagree, but I'm going to do it respectfully and politely. I disagree with you because, or from my experience, this. But I'm not going to degrade you. I'm not going to berate you. I'm not going to make you feel less than. Like, I honestly do not take it personally. Not anymore. And I realize, and I don't have a lot of followers. Like, I have a little bit under 7,000 followers. I'm about to hit that 7,000 mark, which is a lot for some and not even a drop in the bucket for others. But as I put myself out there every single day on LinkedIn, I'm realizing that, you know, you get a lot more feedback. People are engaging with your content and you're going to get the haters. And and that's fine. And most of the time, I'll ignore, I'll block, I'll move on. But if you are going out of your way as a man, to make a woman feel less than, you are going to get called out. And that's the only reason I engaged with that one man in that one post many, many months ago. He went out of his way to try to berate me for having an opinion very similar to three other men, but he didn't go after them. Ignore, move on, and block. 
don't add fuel to their fire. Just move on. Unless it's something completely egregious. As somebody who talks about female empowerment, it would have been, it would have been unlike me to not have responded to that specific comment. Jayhan, where do we find you? I am very active on LinkedIn. I don't share other social media because for me, Facebook and Instagram is family and friends and it's private. I, I gave up Twitter slash X because I'm tired of saying Twitter slash X. I am very easy to find. I am very Googleable. I have a very unique name. And if you can spell Sherry Han and you just type in Sherry Han Ross, you will find me. It is me. Nobody else has my name. I also have a website, SherryHanRoss.com. I do answer every message and DM that comes my way. That's amazing. Closing remarks as we wind down. Do you. Don't play the game. Just do what makes you happy. Do what moves you. Do what speaks to you. Take care of yourself and everything else will fall into place. Follow your heart. Be authentic. Be genuine. Lead with kindness and empathy. And I promise you, I promise you, things will fall into place. Thanks, Sherry Thank you so much, Amy. This has been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. 